Welcome back to the Football Today podcast. I'm your host, Liam McCallion, also known as the Stats Guy. No Alex, which a lot of people will like. I don't know if we like it. Some, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I'm, as always, I'm joined for a huge Euros preview by Marcus Barzana. How are you going, Marcus? And we've been absolutely pumped with the Euros so far. Yeah, 100%. There's been so many good games and there's football every day. So what is there not to be excited about? Yeah, I thought Alex might be on this because he uh, hates watching England sometimes and they obviously drew overnight which we'll get into but that uh, part of the show today is going to be the wrap of the match day two games so far a huge preview of the rest of the games over the weekend in the Euro 2024 action and make sure you get around this podcast on YouTube uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel we're going to road to what's our road to for this one maybe 500 I'd say yeah and then let's road go to 1000 we'll just build up to that and uh, listen to this wherever you get your podcasts well, as always on this show, on the Football Today show, we start off with the yeah, nah. Uh, Marcus, what have you got in this one for today? Well, uh, we've seen some great goals so far in this tournament. It's only halfway through the group stage, so I'll put this to you. Is this the best ever tournament for exciting goals that we've seen Ooh. in recent years? Obviously, South Africa, uh, the World, the South African World Cup was very good. In terms I'd, of say, goals. I'd say since the South African World Cup, I'll say yeah, but... Of all time, I'm going to say nah, just because that South Africa World Cup, I had that ball, the Jabalani. It, uh, they don't use it anymore because it was curling sideways every time someone <laughs> would kick it. There was the most amount of knuckleballs I've ever seen in a tournament was that tournament. But in terms of recent history, probably the last yeah 10 years, I'd say, yeah, it's been unbelievable. Well, I was going to do this in the news ticker, but for a stat, uh, there's already been 13 goals scored from outside the box, which mm. is more than the entire group stage of uh, the last year. We're only halfway through the, the group stage at the moment. So it's been awesome. What do you, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's, it's it's weird. I'm not sure if the players are just hyping up for the occasion and just yeah. playing incredibly well, but everyone just, every winger and striker and midfielder, every time they seem to have a shot from outside the box, it, it either goes in the back of the net or it hits the crossbar or the I post. It's, it's crazy. The shooting has been incredible so far and it, and it makes for uh, good games and good score lines. Yeah, well, it might even be to do with the crowds. They're, they're hyped up. Obviously, we had some uh, lesser crowds in some of the past tournaments due to COVID and things like that. So maybe they just fired up for the uh, big crowds. Like, oh, we've got to put on a show for the for the uh, home fans. Yeah, and there's, there's, there's been a lot of late goals this tournament as well. So it's been very has, exciting. Yeah, a few stats coming up uh, that yeah reflect that. That's a few after the 94th minute, which has been nuts, especially overnight, actually. All right, let's start with a bit of news. I already said that there's been a lot of goals scored from outside the box. So we'll go to the next one here. Kylian Mbappe, he was seen wearing this fancy new French flag mask. Hasn't been ticked off by UEFA, sadly, because you have to have one color, I just read. So he's got the uh, three colors of the French flag. It did look pretty cool. He does look like a Ninja Turtle, again. Uh, yeah, what do you reckon? Does it, does it suit him at all, Marcus? <laughs> uh, well, of course a mask suits him because he's a Ninja Turtle. But it's, yeah. it's just a shame that he, he didn't wear a Ninja Turtle mask. Like um, I know. Remember when he got pranked with the Ninja Turtle mask when he was at PSG? He did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like in a fake Dior box, which was pretty funny. Uh, but honestly, your wafer, come on, just we can let him have three colors on a mask. It's not going to make any difference to the game. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's similar to like a mouth guard in in other sports. Uh, yeah, you get different colors. Mouth yeah. Guard, who cares? Yeah, yeah. I I know. I think they they're being a little bit too serious there. But apparently, he's going to have to come and get like a black one or a white one for the uh for the game ahead. So that'd be that'd be interesting. I I think yeah. What what color ninja? Maybe like an orange one would be pretty cool. But then they're playing the Netherlands, so maybe that's a bit of a weird one. We have, uh, we have next seen, one. We have seen yeah. some great players wear masks actually. We a have lot of yeah great players. I remember um, more recently Antonio Rudiger's wore one. Yeah, um, Aussie men. Aussie men's warm one. So he wore a Batman one. That was pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. There's been there's been heaps of players to do so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next one. Getting a little bit more serious. Uh, Serbia threatened to leave the tournament if disciplinary action doesn't happen towards Albania and Croatia. The Albania and Croatia fans at their game. So that wasn't even at, at the Serbia game. At their game, the Albania versus Croatia game, were doing anti-Serbia chants, I just read. So uh, it, it's come down under racism and discrimination, which is horrible. We don't like to see that at all in these tournaments. I've seen so many good articles about everyone getting along at these tournaments, Germany and Scotland fans having a beer together, things like that. And then this mm. is ruining it a little bit. And Serbia threatening to leave, which is a, a bit of a worry, Marcus. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm i not sure what to make of this, to be honest. Mm. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, like a bluff from Serbia. Um, Maybe. Obviously because there is a lot of prize money involved with the Euros. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not great to see. Uh, it, it was what the, the Albanians and the, and the Croats were were basically chanting about Serbia fans and Serbian people to be deleted. Um, yeah, well, that's a better word. Yeah. Um, so 
yeah, it's it's horrible that that's happening, and, and UEFA should definitely step in and, and do something. Yeah, no, nah, there's been so many good things happening in this tournament. Just stick to your game, stick to your fans, stick to your team. I think that's the uh, that's the message coming out of this one. And hopefully Serbia, they hopefully they sort that out, and then Serbia stay in the tournament because they've been pretty exciting and so have their their fans. Yep. Uh, all right, match wraps for match day two. So match day two started a couple of days ago. We'll start off with Croatia versus Albania. I think this was one of the matches of the tournament. I was watching this one late the other night. Two all. Two mm. all. Uh, a lot of people would have said Croatia win this one easy, but they look a bit old and slow as we predicted the, yeah. at the start of the tournament. Yeah, they, they, they were poor and they've been poor mm. throughout this whole tournament. And with Spain beating Italy this morning, that would have been a huge three points for Croatia. Um, yeah, to finish top two in their group at the very least. Yeah, yeah, Albania just awesome, insane pace on the counter attack. I saw them; uh, their, their first goal was just amazing. The crowd as well; their, their crowd is one of the loudest. I think you got Scotland, Netherlands, uh, Albania probably up there for the top three loudest crowds. They're just mm. unbelievable. Every time they get on the counter attack, and their crowd was just an extra player. Croatia yeah. obviously got it back at up to two one, but they just—I don't know—they're lacking that willingness to shoot. They've got a lot of guys. Modric is just trying to lay it off every time. There's been so many goals from outside the box. They need to have a, have a shot or just cut in and try and take the shot on rather than do those little dicky passes, I think. Yeah, certainly, I've, I've been saying it all tournament, just play Kramaric up front. You got on the score yeah. sheet and you can, I think he can have more of an influence up top than he does out wide. Mm. Yeah, actually, that's a very good call. Kramaric up, he ended up getting on the score sheet. You got Perisic who started, so I'm sure you're happy to see that. You, you called for that as well. Yeah, uh, except he, he started at fullback, which was a bit surprising yeah. um, in, instead of on the wing. But I don't I don't hate that. I think there's there's room for uh, Perisic to, to overlap um, while the others invert. Yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. At least they were trying to play a little bit attacking out of defense. But yeah, then you had Jasula, really late goal, 94th or 95th minute, I think, for Albania to equal it up. Crushed the Croatian fans. They were going nuts. There was flares everywhere. And then it ended up to all. So... Bad result for Croatia, really good result for Albania. They almost yep. deserve to win that. They, they were so good in the first half that they probably could have had a couple more goals. So very unlucky for Albania and Croatia. They're going to struggle with that group of death. As yeah. we predicted, I think they're going to struggle in this one. Honestly, honestly uh, could, yeah. could we could we see Albania? I know they, they play um, Spain, yep. but is there a chance that they get out of that group ahead of Croatia? Possibly, but the way they're playing... They know how to get on the score sheet, I think, a little bit better than, than Croatia. So, possible. Mm. So, so, Italy beat know. Croatia and well, Albania pretty much have to... Have to win? No, I think they can only they can get draw. a point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a yeah, that's a possibility, actually. That'd be that'd be massive. And then Croatia come last. Oh, they would, they would <laughs> not be happy with that. All right. Next one is Germany, the hosts, obviously, versus Hungary. Germany win 2-0. And because mm. of that huge goal difference, they've already progressed. Seven goals in two games. So, they're absolutely flying. Uh, I just wrote down here, Musiala. He does it again. He scored. Yeah. He is an absolute freak at the moment. He's the youngest player in Euro's history to score in the first two games of, uh, of the tournament. So 21, just over 21 years old. He's an absolute beast. Yeah, he is. He's a freak. Um, Hungary, you know, they they weren't as bad as they were in the first match day, but they, no, they, they played were okay. a little bit better, but obviously yep. still, not, still not good enough to get over the powerhouse of, of Germany. Although Manuel Neuer did make... Um, a few very good stops, especially from the uh, Shobbers Lie free kick um, yeah. and, and follow up from that. So Hungary were probably unlucky not to find the back of the net. But um, did you see how funny it was when uh, Fulkrog, the German striker, he, he plays one into the crowd during the warm-ups. Yes. yes. And broke a fan's arm. So I the forgot fan about had that. to go to the hospital. <laughs> um, but he got a signed shirt and... Um, yeah. and a personal message out of it. So I think I think that German fan was well redeemed. Yeah, when those balls fly into the crowd, I, I think I've jokingly said before, oh, there's a there's a broken body part. Well, there's there's someone's died from that that horrible shot. It's actually so I, dangerous. I, I didn't think it would actually happen, but he's broken his arm, the the guy, and fair play to Full Krug sending him a shirt for that. Uh, yeah. that that's pretty funny. And I saw he was on the way to the next game in his cast. And his cast has the German flag uh, on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, they're going to have cool to put a, put a net up behind the goals like they do in, in footy when they when they have shots before the game. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've been in like behind the goals pre match yeah. when 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 players are warming shots. up and shooting. And, yeah. and when it's the A League, trust me, there's balls flying into the crowd, not into the back of the net. So <laughs> I can tell you, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It actually, hasn't happened too much at this tournament. As we said, there's been 13 goals hit the back of the net from outside the box. But yeah, brutal for that one. Germany do it pretty easy. They progress uh, to the next round, which we expected. They've done well uh, to bounce back. 
very young team uh, mm. with a little bit of experience as well. You got Cruz and a few others. Yeah, you got like, good yeah, they, they, in there and and Cruz. Like, they look it, really good. Yeah, they're so good. I think they're definitely semi final bound at the very least. Yep. No, good call. Uh, next one, Scotland versus Switzerland. Scotland get a point finally. <laughs> the Scottish fans, they made it seem like it was a home game, one all uh, to Switzerland. This was actually a really fun game. Very yeah. attacking, uh, just a lot of good passing in the midfield. Crowd again was unbelievable. The Literally sounded like it was at Hamden Park, which is uh, in Scotland. It mm. just it sounded so loud. Uh, McTominay was great in, uh, in, I think he played like a, uh, what did he play, a cam sort of role? Yeah, he played for sort Scotland. Of like, yeah, as a 10. It's really, as a 10. It's really weird. I, I don't yeah. understand. Like, you're playing John McGinn as striker and yeah. McCommonay in the 10. I think if you just swap those two. Swap those two, yeah. That's what I was You could thinking, get yeah. a much better performance out of Johnny McGinn. Um, yeah. But, look, this game could have been 2-2. It could have been 3-2 either way. Um, yeah. Definitely goals left on offer by, by both teams. But um, Angus Gunn had, had a good game for, for Scots in, in goal, didn't he? He did. He did really well. Switzerland, yeah, had a lot of shots on uh, target and yeah, Gunn did really well. McTominay, as I said, was really good. He was still good in that number 10 position, so maybe that's why. Yeah. But I do agree that McGinn is better at building up play, so I'm surprised he's not starting yeah. in that 10 and, position. And McTominay is, is, is probably better at, at finishing chances. So yeah. We've seen him yes. play as, we've seen him play as sort of like a, a false nine at times yeah. for Manchester United, and, and he's played at striker for, up front for Scotland um, yeah. previously. So. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure. He like, and he was the top scorer through for Scotland throughout the Euro qualifiers. So, yes, um, a bit surprised a bit of a to see one. him as a ten and McGinn up mm. top. Yeah, I think they'll take a point. Shakiri, the human meatball, he's he's back. Yeah. He's uh, now scored in the last six major tournaments, and he's the only yeah. European to do that, which which blows my mind. He's so he's actually had a bit of an underrated career, uh, Zerdan Shakiri. He's been yes. he's been really good. I think yep. people. He's just been a bit of a meme early on in his career when he was called the meatball and he was just zooming past <laughs> everyone. But he's had a had a really good career, especially for Switzerland. It's mm. like uh, a Choa that used to play. Is it from the Mexican goalkeeper? They sort of unearth yep. him for the big tournaments. They unearth Shakiri. Yeah. He melts down and uh, and just dominates in the big tournaments. <laughs> look, this is this, and we look forward to the last uh, match day of this group. It's going to be huge. Scotland, Hungary, yeah, third yes. and fourth winner of that goes through. You'd think, yeah. Um, so massive. I think, yeah, that's going to be a really close game. Hungary haven't, haven't looked that good. Scotland have been okay, so it'll, think, it'll yeah. be a really close game. I think Germany and Switzerland have nailed on that, um, that first and second spot. First two, yep. Uh, and then now it's just out for a third place. Third. Yeah, it's going to be really close. Uh, next one, we're going to wrap up Slovenia versus Serbia. This one was one all. Slovenia, I just wrote down here, at remain winless in their Euros history. I think now they've played five or six games. They played really well here uh, until a really, really, really late goal by uh, Luka Jovic. That's yeah. an equaliser. The latest equaliser in Euros history I, I saw here. 95th oh, wow. minute. So, okay. so they'll be uh, filthy that they didn't get the uh, all the points. Uh, yeah, that would have been a huge three points as well for mm. um, for Sylvania because, look, now they do sit in, in third place, but really yeah. this whole group is, is up for grabs. Um, yeah, you think because England aren't playing too well, and you know you never know if Slovenia can get a point um, that could see them through. Uh, hopefully, that's the case. Um, but Serbia was so unlucky not to score <laughs> before I know. the ninety fifth oh. minute. Mitrovic hit the crossbar, yeah, um, which he should have put away, and there were just so many chances left on offer. Um, and and Benjamin Seško had a couple of uncharacteristic shots over the bar, but yeah, they'll take a point. Um, and head into the final match day against England, Slovenia. Yeah. The only good thing about the, the, this draw, even Slovenia would, would be uh, annoyed that they didn't win, is that the, this group is so close. So it just will mm. come down to... you need All these teams were just desperate for a win in their last game. Uh, Serbia, though, yeah, they looked so good in the second half. So many chances hitting the crossbar, as you said. So they'll, they'll also be annoyed that they didn't win this probably 2 or 3 one. Uh, Slovenia played really well, but Serbia just just lacking those those finishes that uh, that we need them, need them to progress. Mm. All right, this one is just hilarious. We, we love to, uh, talking down England on a lot of our shows. Denmark versus England, one all. I was going to say this later, but beating Denmark isn't for everyone. We're, the, we're Australian, obviously, when we play them in the World Cup. <laughs> we beat them 1-0. Maybe England need a bit of Matthew Leckie. What do you, what do you reckon, Marcus? Yeah, honestly, if Matthew Leckie was in that side, he'd, he'd go in and, and do a job. He'd score <laughs> a solo goal from the halfway line. Yeah. Yeah, no, no good uh, by England. Oh, that's to be fair. They started really well. Harry Kane was on the score sheet. A lot of people said he shouldn't be in the starting lineup, and he says, uh, "Cop that. I'm back on the score sheet. That's why Again, I am though, a good he, striker." He, he scored, but 
He wasn't. He great. looked slow after that. Like, yeah. Um, Gareth Southgate dragged him after seventy minutes. Yep. Watkins looked good once he came on. He had a couple of chances. Um, added something different running in behind. Yep. But my God, Gareth Southgate, what are you doing? <laughs> he didn't change it's, him it's, up at all. It's it's so obvious what England need to do and, yep. and what changes need to make. Again, substitutions were wrong last game. They're wrong yep. this game again. I, the game just screamed out for Cole Palmer. And again, did. did not get a single minute. He was the top goal contributor for the entire Premier League last season with, I think, 33 yes. um, goals and assists. And look, they, they hit the front. With a couple of with a deflected cross, um, probably fairly fortunate in the end because the Denmark that's how they got their cleared it. That's how they got their other goal last game so, as well. Actually, so they haven't <laughs> been great in creating chances. No. I'd say um, as much as other teams have, especially against like lower ranked nations. Um, obviously, yep. England are ranked number four or five in the world at the moment. But you go in front, and they they made the mistake of sitting back in the previous game, which almost saw them concede a goal and, and drop points. And they do the exact same thing again and yep. and allow, um, I'm going to butcher this name, Hulmund, um for Denmark. Yep. So much space towards the end of the box. Like, Of course, it was a fantastic strike, one of the best goals of the tournament. So it was amazing, opinion, yeah. Um, yep. Absolute bullet off the post. Mm-hmm. But you, you can't give a, a midfielder that much space and, and sit that deep when, when you're England. They just struggle. They're really struggling to hold onto the ball. Um, yeah. They need to be a bit more. I think they're lacking a little bit of confidence. When you got this team, yeah. you got so many good players. You can press up a little bit more. You can be more attacking. You can cut in. Same as the uh, substitution. Gary Saskia, this needs a little, little bit more aggressive. Take some chances on some players like Cole Palmer. I agree on that one because mm-hmm. Denmark they they really lifted for this game. They had more possession, more shots, and more shots on target. Now yeah. England, England probably yeah still played a little, probably a little bit better, but probably a little bit better, but. But it, the fact they didn't that didn't deserve to win, yeah. No, no way. It definitely deserved deserved a draw. Uh, I forgot to say this one about Harry Kane as well. He became the third English player to score at four major tournaments behind Wayne Rooney and Michael Owen. So that's yep. that's a little little stat for Harry Kane there. But you're right, Ollie Watkins. They could have brought him on possibly a little bit earlier, and he he might have ba- bagged a goal. I t- yeah, I don't. I t- yeah, it's, it's it's hard. You have to be a brave man to drop Harry Kane in the sort true, of form that true. he was this season, and yep. in his stature as captain and an England leader. But, yep. Uh, Jude Bellium and English fans were sort of brought back down to earth because Jude yes. Bellium was probably the worst English player in the park. Um, that is so rare the, for him. Yeah. some of the substitutes. Um, yeah. He lost 10 jewels, um, zero, I think zero chances created or one chances created, no goals, no assists. Um, and oh, good. Yeah, just wasn't wasn't the, the Jude Bellingham we've seen. Um, no. Obviously, he's a great player, probably top three best players in the world. But uh, yeah, just had a bit of a under under par performance. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. This is uh this is like classic England that they have all the players in the world, and then just doesn't always gel together. As mm. this has happened a lot in our lifetime. All yeah. right, that's all the wraps uh, so far for match day two. We're gonna get into the match day two weekend preview. Well, we've got one in- more game, stats guy. Have we got one more game? What have I missed? Spain and Italy. How the hell did I forget that, Marcus? Funny how uh, what is uh, Spain Italy? Italy. One of the biggest two. Two of the tournament. Oh. Oh, two heavyweights of the tournament. No, you're not off for this one then. You're you're the resident Italian, as we said last show. Uh, look, it it uh, it wasn't a great performance from Italy. Um, let's put it that way. Spain definitely deserved the win. Um, probably unlucky not to be two, three yeah. to the good. Um, and, and the goal was unlucky from an Italy point of view. Came it came from an own goal, but um, in all fairness, yeah, Spain should have won that by. Uh, at least two goals because it was 20 shots to four in the end. Yeah. Um, so they smashed um, the previous champions in Italy. And look, over the first uh, couple of match days so far that we've seen from the majority of teams, you'd have to say Spain have been the best team of the tor- uh, best team in the tournament so far. I think they've just been a little bit better than Germany. Yep. Um, although scoreline might not reflect that this game, but I think Spain... So far, they've showed that they can go pretty good. Yeah, I'll I'll agree with that. The only thing I'm worried about, it's the same as past tournaments. Those 20 shots, nine shots on target for one goal, and it was an own goal. Yes. I am very worried about that because obviously last game, what did they win? Uh, Three, no, two nil. Two nil last game. Uh, Oh, sorry. Three Three, three, nil against three nil. Three nil. Three nil last game. So that was really good. I just want to see that that type of scoreline from Spain a little bit more before I can start getting on their sort of bandwagon because, yeah, they should be winning this at least two or three nil with the amount of shots they're having. But they got over the line. They embarrassed Italy. Mm. Italy only had one shot on target, so that's an awesome effort, and they do look really, really yep. good, Spain. So they it might be a bit yep. of a bit of a dark horse for the whole the whole thing. Yeah, they've 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 hundred percent topped the group now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, there you go. So 
Yeah, that's that's great for unless unless they miraculously lose to Albania and Italy no. beat Croatia by four goals, then <laughs> not happening. Uh, or three goals, then yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, Nico Williams missed some big chances, but Spain looking good. Yeah, no, they look really good. All right, let's get into some more match day two previews. This is the weekend matches. Before we get into the first two match day three matches, that's before our next show. First one we're going to cover is Slovakia versus Ukraine. Very big match for both sides. Mm. Slovakia need a win. Uh, they obviously got a draw last game. Ukraine were really disappointing against Romania. How are you feeling about this one? Yeah, look, yeah. It's, oh, it's, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How's the reaction? I just, like, I, um, because I'm a Mudrik fan, obviously. I'm a <laughs> you got the Chelsea fan. kid on. Yeah. Mudrik is the goat. I was just so disappointed in Ukraine. Uh, like My reaction there literally just summed up um, <laughs> Ukraine because... They were so disappointing against Romania, but Romania looked good, I guess. Um, Slovakia obviously beat Belgium. Um, yeah, they were amazing. They deserve to win that game is probably another another question. Um, but nevertheless, they did win the game. And you'd have to say they'd head into this game as favourites of, of what we've seen so far. So um, I will back Slovakia. Actually, no, I'll go I'll back Ukraine and Mudrik. Why not? I'll go a 1-1 draw. 1-1 draw? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Slovakia. 1-0 again. I think they held up really strong defensively. I know they got lucky with uh, some uh, VAR decisions, but they still got a clean sheet against Belgium. So I think that's uh, something to, mm. to look uh, look ahead to. So yeah, I'm going to go Slovakia. 1-0. And that's going to that's gonna be a really close game there and one to, one to keep an eye on. Next one, mm-hmm. Poland versus Austria. I think Lua Lewandowski comes back for this one. So that's a huge in for Poland, it'd be interesting to see yeah, if he plays Austria. Yeah. Yeah, they're both teams, again, this could be a really close one. Yeah, 100%. But unfortunately, I think I don't think see these two teams of having much of a chance no. of finishing in the top two. France and Netherlands already won both their opening games. Yep. And it'll, it'll be pretty tough to knock one of those two teams out of the tournament. But in terms of third place qualification, this yeah. is a huge game. Yeah. Um, so... Honestly, I don't know which way this game's gonna gonna go. Uh, I'll probably lean towards another draw. <laughs> another draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can't be a Marcus prediction without a draw. That's so, true. Um, already I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Poland, Austria. Draw. Okay, I'm gonna go. Austria win. I just had a look. They had more possession against France and and only conceded the one goal. So they're pretty strong defensively. I don't think Poland have enough attacking threat. So I'm going to go Austria Austria 2-0. I think they're the better side here. So I reckon they're going to get mm. over the line. Next one, this is probably the biggest tournament. Ah, sorry, the biggest tournament. The biggest, it is the biggest tournament, but it is the biggest match over the weekend of match day two, Netherlands versus France. Two teams that are trying to top the group. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a huge one. Yeah, 100%. This is just going to be whoever whoever wins this, if someone does win this, tops the group. Yep. Um. And honestly, I'm I'm picking France in this one. It's so hard to Ooh, go against France. Yeah. Um, look, Netherlands. I can I can see them going far. They got the ability to go far. But again, I just think they're struggling up front um, yeah. for some goals. Obviously, they got uh, Vardy Wakehorst. Yes. Um, <laughs> who, who can chip in with a goal, uh, like Depay off the bench and those sorts of players. But again, France just have quality everywhere. And how good was N'Golo Kante in oh, the first game? He's back. To, he's to, back. To, to not play for France for two years, play in, he plays uh, club football in Saudi Arabia, and just then dominant. start ahead of the likes of Chouameni and Kamavinga, and then get man of the match. Freak. Was unreal. He's, he's at... How old is he now? 30... Uh, let's have a look. 30 something, 31, 33, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, 33. 33. Um, 33. So he's... Unreal football. Yeah, Unreal. No, he's an absolute freak. I'm going to go a draw in this one. I think both teams are on a similar uh, trajectory so far. I think Netherlands can hold really strong in, de- in defense. The other one is if Mbappe plays or not. I think if Mbappe doesn't play, that's a that's a huge out, obviously for France. Uh, just that, mm. just defenders just get mag- just a, a magnet towards Mbappe. So if he doesn't play, I think Netherlands could win this. But I'm going to go a draw because I think both teams are a bit closer than a lot of people think. Uh, and even though France are just doing dominating world football over the last few years. All right, next one uh, we're going to cover Georgia versus Czechia. Georgia were a bit unlucky to lose, I think, was the first game. They lost they lost 3-1 to Turkey because Turkey scored some absolute Yes, games. Turkey were just scoring goals from almost halfway, it felt like. Gula with that, then, with that screamer. Yeah, and then Czechia were probably unlucky to lose against Portugal because Portugal scored really late on yeah. um, to win that game. So, um, look, both teams looked good. I was surprised by Georgia. In all honesty, yeah. they had a lot of tricky players um, that were taking people on the on, on the Definitely. wings, which which is great to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was interesting to see because you assume Czechia will control possession, yep. unlike their game against Portugal, 
So it'll be different to to what we saw in the first match day. But uh, I, I fancy Georgia to bag a goal here. Yep. Um, but I think Czechia probably have just have the quality to, to pip them in the end. I agree. I think it's going to be, yeah, 2 1. I'm going to go to Czechia. Just think they've got yep. more quality and attack. And that, yeah, these guys that have finished. But Georgia did put up a strong fight last game. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they get on the score sheet. All right. Next one uh, Ronaldo is back. Uh, Turkey versus Portugal. This is a huge game for Portugal. Uh, yeah. If they get another win here, obviously got over the line 2 1 last game. Turkey looked mm. amazing. Obviously, some bangers outside the box. Their crowd was awesome. This will be a fun game, I think, because Turkey just play really yeah. attacking. Portugal obviously have so many star players. They only just got over the line in the, was it 90 something minute, uh, Portugal? Yeah, it was really late. Really on. late, yeah. late yeah. for So they'll be desperate to just be a bit more uh, dominant in this one, I think. So this could be a big scoreline, do you think? Well, I think, I don't, I'm not sure about a big scoreline, but I do think Portugal will win yeah. this. Um, poss- possibly like a 2 0 sort of, just okay. workman like cruise to. To a, a handy three points, um, but you never know. Like they were poor in the 2016 Euros, they and they finished third place. They they progressed as the third place finisher um, in that tournament, ended and up they winning won. the Euros. Yeah, yeah. So, um, look, you don't have to be amazing in the group stage to go on and win the tournament, but it's it's still good to see signs of of, of winning. Yep. Um, but. In saying that, I do think Portugal should win this. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Portugal as well. I think I'll, I'll go 3-1. I think Turkey yeah, just will score another bang. Gula from outside of the box again. Why not? Very second ever <laughs> he ever goal. Portugal as well. I think Ronaldo, I know he's just the man to talk about. He created so many chances last game. I wouldn't be surprised if he, probably not a goal, but an assist, I think, in this one, just because he set up so much mm. of the play. Offside by an arm and a, a few other things last game a couple of times. So I think he's going to set up yep. their play and Portugal cruise to a win. Uh, last game we're going to talk about about in match week two is Belgium versus Romania. Belgium with an absolute upset. They should have beaten Slovakia, but they lost 1-0. Yeah. Romania were the surprise of the tournament against Ukraine, just dominating 3-0. Yeah. Their crowd as well was amazing. Surely Belgium bounce, bounce back here, but they're such a roller coaster team. You got I have no idea what Belgium is going to turn up. Yeah, 100%. You hit the nail on the head there. You don't know what team, <laughs> what Belgium side is going to rock up, but look, they could have... Easily scored three goals um, in in their first yeah. uh, match day, uh, so they'll probably unlucky in that sort of sense. But Lukaku missed some big chances, as typical big one yeah. um, does. Uh, obviously, flashbacks to Inter Milan, Manchester City uh, Champions League final. Yep. Um, but look, Belgium again. Belgium should win this. Romania looked awesome. Yep. They looked really good. But in saying that, was against Ukraine, and Belgium is a different kind of opponent. Yep. When you got the likes of, of Trossard, who doesn't need many chances to find the back of the net. Um, Lukaku, a big, strong figure. Like Lukaku, Lukaku versus uh, Jugusen would That'd be, be a fun matchup. An interesting yeah. sort of battle. Yeah. Um, but obviously, yeah, they've got talent everywhere, Belgium. It's just defensively, can they hold up and not concede against um, Romania? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. I think it would be. I'm going to go 2 0 Belgium. Uh, Romania, yeah, they might. They'll be pretty strong defensively, so it's not going to be a big blow. But Belgium surely yep. bounce back here with the team that they have on on paper. Uh, all right, let's go to match day three to wrap this up. The first two games before we get into our show on Monday: Switzerland versus Germany. This is another huge match uh, at the moment. One and two in the group, uh, so that they're, they're going really well. Uh, Germany mm. obviously progressed, and Switzerland are pretty much uh, locked in. Would you say for top two? I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think if they, if they avoid a big defeat, yep. then they're definitely locked in for top two. Um, and honestly, I think that's probably what's going to be on the cards. I'm going to go Germany 1-0 because the, the Swiss defense is the best part of the Swiss yes. team. So, and, and Germany are Germany. So um, <laughs> I think they'll get over long. Yeah, yeah, Germany with their awesome kits, I think, uh, and the home crowd advantage. Oh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go 2-1. Why not? Shakiri, the meatball, is going to score another one. He just loves scoring goals. And every time he gets a chance, he takes it. Uh, but Musiala and uh, Wurtz, I think, are going to be on the score sheet. 2-0 for... Sorry, 2-1 for Germany for me there. Last one we're going to wrap up is Scotland versus Hungary. Huge game. This could decide who finishes third and who progresses. I am leaning towards mm. Scotland because I'm a biased Scottish background. I well, am too. And I think they I have some finishes like McTominay, like McGinn. They've settled because a lot of these guys haven't played in big tournaments. Sorry, their whole team have never played in a major tournament before. They settled last game to get that draw. I think they're building into something big and they can get a win to finish off the group stage here. Oh, I'm, I'm only picking Scotland because Hungary have been that, that poor. Yeah. Oh, I think I think Hungary have been really bad so far. So, look. <laughs> uh, 
I actually rate the Scottish side except for defence. Yeah, like the defence is aging. shambles. Yeah. yeah, like Andy Robertson um, plagued with injury yep. and then at times couldn't find himself back in the team for Liverpool. Yep. And then um, Kieran Tierney, who's... <laughs> He's played more. Uh, he's played more minutes than than Zinchenko uh, at Arsenal, which is kind of funny. But uh, he's look. He's he hasn't hit the heights as he it was expected to hit when he was at uh, Celtic. Yep. Um, and, and moved to to Arsenal. But look, I'll go Scotland here. I actually I really rate Shea, I rate Shea Adams as a footballer. Okay. I think, I think he's fairly underrated. Yep. Yeah, and I think I think this is the type of game where he can find the back of the yep. net. Yeah, I'm going to go McGinder score. I'm going to go one nil. This just a lot of both teams aren't the best finishers so far in this tournament, so I think it's just going to be a one nil. Could be a one all, but I'm going to lean towards one nil for the uh, for the Scottish as they they'll be partying if they uh, make it through. There might be chaos in Germany if they if they get a win there. That'd be absolutely awesome. All right, that's all the games we've covered over the weekend for our previews. Make sure to check us out on our live stream actually Tuesday morning, five a.m. Marcus and I will be uh, up and about, even though it's five a.m. in uh, Melbourne time. On the beers, on the brekkie yeah, rolls. rolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe just the brekkie roll. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Croatia versus Italy and Spain versus Albania are actually on at the same time. So two huge matches. Some of the biggest teams, biggest fan bases in the whole world going head-to-head there. So we're very excited for that. Yep. Croatia will, and Italy are desperate for a win. Spain and Albania have mm. been awesome in this tournament so far. So check out the live stream. That'll be on TikTok. I'm trying to organize YouTube and a few other things there as well. Instagram as well on Football Today AU. So get around that. All right, I think that's it for the show. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thanks, that's Hopefully the Scottish can get a win. Um, Definitely following them. Thank you very much, homie, for jumping in and recording this. Thanks to me, and that's Football Today out.